Hey, this is another video from Moi, Kevin Phillips, and in this video I'm going to be running through some of the scripts that I developed over the last 10 plus years um, that I've recently put up online on my blog for download. So if you're interested in scripting or you want some uh, cool new tools to toy around with, or maybe you just want some stuff to uh, give you some ideas for other scripts or how to write some scripts, then you'll find them here on my blog under kevman3d.blogspot.co.nz and you'll find them if we scroll down here. Now they may not be at the top of my blog like uh, they are at the moment uh, if I've posted anything new since uh, you watched this video. Um, you can find them under Blog Archive 2013 December 3rd. Now inside each of these posts, I'll just click on that to go into one, you'll find a download link and when you click here it will just take you to a Google Docs page. Okay, and you can individually download each script here if you want to. But I'd say the best thing to do here is go File, Download. And what this will do is we'll let you download the entire zip file, which has all those in it. Okay, so there are two posts in here, and you'll probably want to go to both. Okay, and these are really just old uh, scripts that I've developed over the last decade and a bit. Some were for fun, some were for learning uh, and ideas. And some were actually written for production. In fact, there's a lot more production-oriented uh, scripts in here than anything else. So I'm going to run through a couple that are related to working with FX Hardlink. Um, and if you're not sure what FX Hardlink is, you're about to find out. Because FX Hardlink is a way of driving animation through a cloth uh, defor deformed object. Um, and I wrote some plugins, or some scripts I should say, to help me work with that to create some nice uh, fake collision effects and I'll show you what that does right now. So let's jump across to Lightwave. So we have a set of objects here that look like funny little uh, donuts with little I guess uh, little antennae sticking out of them and we have a plane here that's uh, got like a basically a grid of faces. And in fact let's just uh, turn off the grid as well and turn the grid off just for now. Makes it a little easier to see when there's black lines and black grid lines all kind of intermingled there. So what is FX Hardlink? Well, let's start by taking this object and let's go to its properties and under Deform let's add, where are we? Displacement Map and I'm going to just add a procedural to just push it around. Okay, I'll make the procedural maybe a little larger. There we go. And under position, I'm going to animate that moving up. And the idea of this is to create like a water type effect. Now what I like to do when I'm animating uh, repeating cycles for things moving through other things, such as uh, making something constantly move, I like to know how fast it is. So if that's a 3 by 3 meter pattern, um, and I know there's 24 frames in a second, let's make it move 2 meters per second. Okay, roughly about there. It's a little little different. There we are. And I'm set linear and linear so it moves forever. Okay, just having like a measurement like that gives you a good way of looking at how fast a texture would move through and through um through the displacement here, I guess. Now let's play that. Okay, not quite water, but uh, good enough for this example. Now we have these uh, objects here. And I want them to float basically on the water there. So I'm going to go to my little floaties object here. And I'm going to go to the properties for that. And under displacement, add displacement, we need this one here called FX Hardlink. And what FX Hardlink should do is it will basically move those like separate pieces on a parent item. So we take those. And let's go motion options and let's parent it to that. And then let's play and it doesn't do anything. Now the reason it doesn't do anything is because FX Hardlink works by linking an object to a deforming cloth object. So what we need to do is we need to tell this object here, the FX Hardlink that uh, is being basically trying to control them, to use this and we need to say this is going to be a cloth object but the problem is we don't want to have to make it a cloth object and simulate 
this again. So I'm quite happy with my procedural animation. And to get this out uh, of here and apply it as a cloth object, all I need to do is I need to bake this out. So under here we have add displacement. And we're going to use MD Baker. And what this would do is it will basically create a point cache uh, from this object out to disk, or in this case, an MDD file. Let's go OK. And we're done. Easy as that. And we can remove that. And now we can actually remove that. Now, to drive these, we need to just turn this into a cloth object. So we get FX, cloth. And if we double click on that and we go file, we can literally just go in and we can just force that uh, file back on here. So it's now playing our animation through the object, but also telling the FX hard link this is actually a cloth object. So they're now sticking or moving around with the object. Okay, so this is great, but the problem we have here, and this will be the first script I demonstrate, is that all of these are made out of pieces, and you'll notice that they're all kind of being broken apart, and they're all being individually moved and animated, which is not a good thing. We want these to move together with their antennae in place. Let's take that object and go properties, and under deform FX hard link, we have a mode in here called point set. And what point set will do is it will basically use groups of points or selection sets and treat them as an individual piece. So if we were to say have all of these parts use a point set, which we'll have a look at in a second, um, it would treat that as one object rather than three separate objects. By default set to polygon. All right, so it breaks it apart into individual parts. You've got one piece which basically makes it like a solid piece that gets deformed as like a large chunk of model and point set. At the moment there's no individual point sets so it looks the same as the one piece because they're all sharing basically the one set of vertices I guess. So let's uh, go back to polygon. Okay, now I need to go through and give all of these their own point set. So let's uh, jump across the modeler and in here it's as easy as this. Let's uh, take all of the points, go down to S and say new point set I call it boat one. There we go. So that object now has an individual point set. Now let's uh, save that, jump across to here, let's bring up our FX hard link, and let's say point set. And you notice that this one, when we play our animation, oops, so let's close that. These still kind of float as one piece. This one has its own motion and if we look closely all the parts are sticking together as a solid object. That's pretty cool. Now if you've got like hundreds of these things it's going to be very monotonous to try and uh, select each one. Go to select your set and go new and, and type another one in. So what I did was uh, for large um, large setups with lots of objects is I wrote a script that automatically applied a new unique selection set to all the selected vertices and then incremented it automatically. So let's go to utilities and let's add a plugin. Okay in this case I'm going to go to my scripts and you'll find this script under collection 2 and it's one here called ink selection set underscore tool dot ls. Okay, so there it is there, and we go, done. Now if we go and give this a keyboard shortcut, just to make our life a little uh, easier. Okay, we'll find it under, where are we, is it in here? There it is, under additional. And let's find a uh, free key. How about we use uh, Control shift s there we go. Doesn't really matter. So we go in here, and what you do with this script is you select that, just select the polys, you can press the uh, right square bracket if you want to make sure everything's selected, and we do that. And what it does is it applies a point set to it, and then hides it. 
and then we can go through the next one and you'll see down here that it's generating a unique one called fx link underscore and a value so let's go in here control shift s and select this one control shift s so you select the polys and it automatically adds a unique selection set to all those selected polys so you can just keep hitting the keyboard shortcut and it will just keep incrementing let's get rid of that one I'll just keep incrementing the count. So if I was to control shift S, it's called FX link that. So we can hit the uh, backslash to unhide those. Let's save it. Let's go back to layout. And let's go uh, properties. Let's make sure we've got it set to point set. Great. Play. And now they all stay together. So there's one script and that's what it's designed for. It's designed for setting point sets for use with this kind of a simulation. In the second part what I'm going to do is show you another tool. And now this is the one that creates a fake simulation um, of collision that I was saying before. And this is one called Fall Away. You go add plugin and you'll find this in collection one under layout animation fall away 006 and adds two plugins fantastic okay I'm gonna go in here I'm going to just uh, let's get properties let's get rid of the cloth effects on this so remove um, for now we can just untick the high fx hard link just to deactivate it so it's not doing anything I'm gonna go in here I'm gonna add a displacement map and I'm gonna put back in my uh, procedural yeah, what I say it was about three. Let's make it uh, let's make it four meters and position. Okay, I'm gonna just make it quite slow. So go in here, linear. I'm not being too exact like I was in the last one. And let's make it a bit more extreme. Let's play that. There we go. That's a bit better. Okay, so what I did was. Uh, in a project that I, we worked on um, for a music video was it was supposed to be a vortex like an ocean an undulating ocean of I think it was jigsaw puzzles at the time and an asteroid or a rock would hit the ocean and that all crumble away now we didn't have um, the bullet dynamics that we do now with Lightwave 11 uh, so we had to find a fake way of doing it so I kind of went home and I thought about it and I thought well actually I'll come up with a tool and I'll write it and I'll take it back into work and we'll use it there so what you need in here was first of all you need a null to represent that the collision object so I want to call that uh, I call it uh, let's call it meteor because I'll make it drop from the top and I might just give it a shape I'll give it a sphere where is a ball, ball there we go and I'm just gonna move it up in the air there okay and what I am gonna do is I'm gonna go back to this object that's currently animated and I am going to go to the properties and add displacement I'm looking for one in here called where are we fall away version 6 if I double click on that it says okay which is the collision sphere well that's it there so that's meteor it's got a radius of one meter okay how fast do you want things to fall when it interacts so it's one meter per frame and randomizer for which gets a, a random speed difference between one and one plus or minus ten percent so I'm gonna click OK for now and I'm going to do that and nothing happens so what I'm going to do is I'm going to animate this falling through it so let's uh, do that rewind and let's play and there you go what happens is the object or the vertices in the object fall away and they fall away pretty quick so let's go back to the fall away script and let's make that a lot smaller 0.01 and what I'm also going to do is I'm going to click this button scale radius by collision size okay so I'm going to scale that um, basically it's going to allow me to scale this and use this to uh, kind of grow out the collision because at the moment it just goes within a range around that null now uh, what I want to do is let's uh, just move this down 
is I want it to kind of break away from the center outward rather than have it just hit and everything just falls down straight below it. So I'm going to animate the scale and I'm going to do that which is the edges. Rewind, play and there we go. Now it's fallen away. Okay, so I'm going to make that a little faster. 0.1 instead. And we go OK. Now it does get a little slow when it comes to large uh, poly objects because it is working on uh, displacement. So it's basically controlling every single vertex in that or analyzing it and then controlling it. Now why would you do this? Well, because we're going to now drive these on the surface and say we want them to all suck into a vortex. What I'm going to do is turn that on. Okay, obviously it's not going to do anything because it's not cloth effects. I'm going to go back here. I'm going to go add displacement MD Baker. And let's call it uh, water fall away. Okay, it'll take a little longer to process because it's running that plugin, the fall away plugin. Okay, I can tick these off. Okay, I can probably remove that displacement map for now. We do what we did before, we go FX, add cloth effects, and file, load motion, the vertex cache will find it, fall away, great. Go to this object, reactivate that, and then they all appear to just uh, fall away with that object because they're all being driven by the deformation. Now the only downside with this of course is if you decide that oh, you need to make it move differently you will have to just remove the cloth effects, make sure we have our deformation turned back on, our L script active, play around the settings, do it, re-MD bake it back out and then reapply our cloth effects. Okay, so that's what those two scripts do. One uh, speeds up the workflow for setting point sets, or for right, this, and the other simulates a really fake, not really, uh, well, it's not accurate at all actually, um, effect of a collision object making something fall away. So there are two scripts you can play with right there.